Thank you, uh, Dr. Habit, and good afternoon. How is everyone? Well, I can tell you I'm excited to be back in North Carolina. I get to talk about North Carolina so much all across this country that I feel like I'm in North Carolina every day. It's great to uh, be introduced many, many times in many, many different places across the country and beyond, and they always say, you know, Carl Harris from Durham, North Carolina. So you guys get a lot of uh, publicity uh, about Durham, and, and uh, I encourage people to come to Durham all the time, to come to North Carolina all the time, because in North Carolina, uh, there is so much to be blessed uh, and be thankful for uh, the work that you do on behalf of our, our state children. I do have some prepared remarks, and I'm going to say those, and then I'm going to sit down and listen to some other people who are more of an expert at doing this work than I am. But I did want to thank Dr. Habit for his leadership with the North Carolina New, School, uh, New Schools Project. And I want to thank the board of directors and the advisors uh, for your leadership. And I'm, in my prepared speech, I'll talk a little bit more about, about, about our teachers and our principal leaders. Uh, but you're all doing phenomenal work. And it could not be done without your commitment and the passion that you have to make uh, teaching and learning better for our children. So let me start with my prepared remarks and let you know that it is a pleasure to be here in North Carolina. Um, and I want you to know, as it was mentioned earlier, I had a wonderful experience as superintendent in Durham Public Schools uh, where uh, the, the Board of Education and the community allowed me to be uh, uh, very much a part of moving some important schools forward. Um, so there are three uh, North Carolina New School Project schools that I had a chance to support as part of my uh, tenure there as superintendent. The Hillside New Tech High School, the uh, Southern School of Engineering, and the City of Madison Academy. And I know that the City of Madison Academy is here today, and I hate to call them out, but uh, they do such phenomenal work. And I know Marianne Black is here with uh, Duke. And we need these kind of partnerships, and we need to establish these kind of partnerships all around the country in order to get the work done that we need um, to be done. More than anything, you truly are an example of excellence and innovation. Uh, we talk about innovation a lot, but talking about it and actually getting it done is two different things. And I like the fact that not only do you talk about innovation, but you prove that innovation is possible through the work that you do each and every day. I understand that a core component of this summer institute is focusing on the achievement of African American male students so that we can ensure that every single child is ready for college and is ready for a career. As educators, I know that you know firsthand the challenges we're facing to improve educational outcomes for all of our students. And we all know that there's a special effort that we need to put in place to make sure we address the needs of our African-American males. So I am honored to be part of this conversation with you and I look forward to hearing uh, comments from our panel in just a few moments. Many of you are well aware of the national statistics, and I won't spend too much time talking about all the national statistics around uh, African-American males, but it is dismal, and I see this firsthand as I travel all across the country. Some things seem to be relevant. Some things seem to uh, not change, no matter which state you're in, no matter which city you're in. As a country, uh, we have to do something about that, and, and that is our responsibility. The Obama administration goal is to turn this cradle to prison pipeline that many people refer to into one that goes from the cradle to the career. So we're, through our efforts, starting with how can we impact our students at a very early age. Uh, so uh, we have focused a lot of our attention on the early learning piece. Our work to su support our African American males really should start at birth. Most of you here today, you work with students in the high school setting. By that time, they've had uh, almost nine or 10 years of education, and you're really uh, challenged with how now do you best prepare them for the world that they're about to walk into. The reality of it is we have to start very, very early. And so I challenge you as high school administrators to, f to find ways to collaborate with your middle school colleagues and your elementary colleagues, find ways to collaborate with your community, with your parents, so that they too understand the importance of getting off to an early start uh, from birth. This work does require courageous leadership because it's very, very clear 
that what we've done in the past to provide a high quality education to every child is not working as well as we would like for it to, to work. It requires courageous leadership because as many of you know, it is not easy to break from tradition and to try new solutions for some of our oldest problems. It does require courageous leadership because there aren't going to be any easy answers to any of this work that we're doing to make sure that every single child reach his or her potential. I know that you, you, you guys understand this, and given the work that you're now doing in our most innovative schools in North Carolina, I know you get to see this firsthand. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about how the U.S. Department of Education is supporting this critical work to ensure that our African-American male students and all of our students are on track, graduating from high school, and ready for college or career. At the department, our work is driven by the belief that we can do better because our children deserve better. And so the president has set his sight on an ambitious goal, and we talk about it all across the country. And that is by 2020, our country will once again lead the world in the proportion of college graduates. But we also know to do this, we must have higher expectations for our students. We must reduce the dropout rate, improve our graduation rate, both at the high school level and the post-secondary level. We must close the achievement gap that we've talked about far too long. And we must raise the level of rigor in our classrooms so that our students will be fully prepared to participate in college and careers without the need for continued remediation. And we must give every student support to not only engage in rigorous learning opportunities, but also to be successful in those learning opportunities. Many of you have probably read our Blueprint for Reform, which is our proposal and recommendation to Congress to change uh, and reauthorize the No Child Left Behind law. In that proposal, there are six priorities that we've really uh, staked ourselves out on. One, that our kids will be college and career ready, that we focus more of our time on supporting the, uh, the building of great teachers and leaders for our schools, that we meet the needs of our diverse learners, that effective teaching and learning for a complete education is important. Not only do we focus on our math, science, and language arts, but we focus on all the skill development needs of our children. That we have safe, uh, successful and safe uh, environments for our students to uh, be educated in. And that we foster innovation and excellence. Innovation means finding ways to educate our children at a higher level, at a more successful level, and being willing to give up some of the old practices that we've used that have not been successful. Since the president took office, the, the Department of Education, as you know, has been gifted with quite a few resources. And we've invested those resources into some, some of our, what we consider to be significant programs. I have to say that the North Carolina New Schools Project design principles align very much to the work that the Department of Education is engaged in. We at the department agree that that's what, that we're focused on ensuring that all of our students are held to these standards. And we want to make sure that students are provided the, rig the rigorous curricula and the high expectation, expectations from our teachers and our schools. The competitive program that you've all heard about, like Race to the Top, Investing in Innovation Fund, have provided billions of dollars to our states and our districts who have already demonstrated their willingness to eliminate barriers and to really move forward with a reform that will increase academic outcome for our kids. Already, we're seeing work across many of these states, including North Carolina, who have voluntarily stepped up and, and are developing rigorous programs uh, so that we can change uh, educational outcomes for our kids. The North Carolina New Schools Project also emphasized power for teaching and engaged students. They emphasize collaboration among teachers uh, and our student personalization with student learning. This focus on effective teaching and learning is a key priority of the administration, as I mentioned earlier, and we're doing as much as we can to continue to enhance that. But the reality of it is when it comes down to it, there's no other school factor that affect a child's academic performance more than the quality of his or her teacher. 
So those of you who are teachers in here today, I applaud you for the work you do. And I want you to know that the educational outcomes of our kids really is dependent upon making sure that we have quality people like you in every single classroom across this country.